my friends are going to see Nick Warren tomorrow night. Maybe five top DJs in the world. I don't know how to rank him. I've seen Nick before. He kicks ass. Everybody I talk to is ready up for it. I'm really excited for this night. Iceland, where freaks come out. Being famous has never bothered me at all. I'm not bothered about being on, on the cover of magazines. I love what I do because I love DJing and I love uh, the music. I think I bought my first record when I was about seven years old. Bob Dylan, the record I, I bought. And uh, from then on, I just bought uh, records all the time. Instead of sweets, I would buy records. I've only been in Iceland about half an hour and here I am in the uh, Blue Lagoon in the middle of a volcano. It was quite spooky. It's quite a spooky atmosphere, I like it. It'd be, it, it is, I especially sort of come to a place like this, so look at it, it's like, it's just weird. It takes some getting used to, but with this sort of right attitude, it's probably the best place in the world to live. It can't be the worst as well. It's just the middle of fucking nowhere, basically. Middle of the fucking North Atlantic Ocean, and, and it's cold in the winter time, especially. It's like being on the moon. Oh, you know, it's just it's mad, mad the landscape. The warmth come from the heart, I think, from the people, from you know. That's that's I think much more important than weather or that kind of thing. Most of our cities in the countries, even though it might be Asia or, or South America or, or North America, sort of, and most uh, cities are pretty much the same, and I think sort of, uh, Reykjavik's going to be extremely different. It's a boiling place. Tremendous energy. Nice weather, man. The reason for Iceland being so strange is probably the reason for Icelandic people never being really surprised when they go elsewhere. <laughs> and the people are, are supposed to be really up for it. People in Iceland like to party very hard, I think. We start drinking late in the night and we get hammered, you know. It's like a 24 hour party. The 101 area is like the main town. It's like the center, of, there's nothing else really. Everything else is suburbia. The Reykjavik 101 area is like a trendy place to stay, in, you know, a lot of like gathering of artists and music. Musically, I suppose, oh, there's so much sort of good stuff that comes out of here. There's Gus Gus and Bjork, so there must be something in the water here that makes people be into like slightly a left field music. My name is Stefansen, also known as President Bongo. And President Bongo has a band called uh, Gus Gus. So everybody's in a band in Iceland. <laughs> Even your alter ego. <laughs> It was a small bar, sort of a place of chill out stuff, and it was really good. It's nice that Nick got uh, sort of this crowd dancing to like music you would, wouldn't usually find Icelanders dancing to like. Maybe uh, the safest place I've ever been to in my life. Even at, at night, at like some sort of midnights or when the streets are packed, uh, people are very, very drunk. Like so last night, night we were out and there was people on, on top of the cars going down the road. And no hassle at all. <laughs> the Icelanders all believe in elves. I do believe in the elves. <laughs> the elves, they are small, they live in little rocks. The elves, they are all around. 
yeah, elves live in, in Iceland, or as we call them, huldufólk as well. It's uh, more like the little people, the hidden people. And I think you can describe this best as a very positive force and a vibe. But it can turn really, really uh, hostile if you don't uh, kind of uh, respect their territories. Well, we're going up to this um, a massive fault line in, in the earth up here. And apparently it's the line in Iceland and between America and Europe. On that side, side it's like America, on that side it's like uh, Europe. So um, yeah, it's, uh, this is the default line, basically. So we could all uh, disappear at any moment. And this is the main place of the Elta Lear. Right at the bar, I thought it was good at the bar. <laughs> gentleman like no down to earth which is uh, strange considering that how he runs his life to, to be able to do all that and still be able to sort of be as down to earth as he is it is really really cold really cold august in iceland it's a great great city it's a shame it's so cold i've got a daughter who's a five years old so i spend as much time with her as i can now uh, which is fantastic. She keeps my feet on the ground as well. So uh, most of the time I spend with her a bit of fishing and a bit of uh, lazing around. Uh, you know, I quite like sort of uh, not doing very much. I remember trying to explain to my grandmother once what I did and she just didn't understand that, uh, the fact I wasn't uh, talking in between uh, the records. I just turned up on uh, my records played music continually for two or three hours and then left and went somewhere else and did it. Being a producer as well as a DJ makes a difference because you're actually making a music. I think it'd be very hard, harder for me to be a DJ and not make records. I went to West is, I mean, uh, Jody Wistanoff, right, sort of uh, seven, eight uh, years ago. I wanted to start uh, uh, making records. I've done a couple of remixes for Massive Attack and really liked studio work. And so we uh, tried a couple of days in the studio and it worked, worked really well and had like three chart hits with uh, the gift of Jarre and Domination. I remember doing the first Universe raves and Tribal and Gathering actually sort of putting uh, the first record on and my hand would be sort of shaking like that, sort of putting the needle on. Good thing. You just rocked it. Oh, this is fantastic. I love the place. There's a fish. I just find it sort of a complete opposite of, of the rest of my life, really. And I think that's the reason I like it. After leaving school as a gamekeeper for, for about sort of five, six years, which is great at the time, but I just found it once I started sort of going off into the woods, sort of feeding the deer with the Walkman on and, and the Clash album in the ears, I just thought, well, I, um, it's not really me. I was always into music, really, and I think think that that's where the DJing stems from. It's like sort of doing house parties and stuff like that, that in Bristol. So, because uh, I was always that sort of really annoying a guy at a party who bought his own 
tape along and I shoved it in the tape player. I love hearing new music and still get excited about their music. I've also the chance to travel and see places like this, you know. So when else will I get to go fly fishing in Iceland, you know? It's not going to happen. In the past sort of 15 years, uh, this whole a culture has so grown up where we get flown sort of first class around the world, play to amazing crowds of people in amazing places. And so there's nothing wrong with the job at all, which is great.